in a weightlifting culture that emphasizes progress and celebrates personal best, the last thing you want to experience in our training is a plateau. And by definition, a plateau is a stop increasing or progressing. A bench press plateau is commonly experienced by most lifters. And this is when they're not able to add weight to the bar or they're not able to increase how many reps they can do on a given weight. And not seeing progress for weeks or months at a time can be very frustrating because it feels like you're investing a lot of time and energy with little to no return. So I wanna give you guys six ways to break bench press plateaus. And I'm also gonna cite the scientific research to support my points. But more importantly, I want you to understand that this isn't just theory or something that I'm taking from some studies. This has been working in practice for trained lifters and it's been helping them break plateaus and get to the next level. Before we get to the points, I want to give you guys one quick example of how this has worked in practice because I want you to believe in it, all right? I want you to believe in it and I want you guys to know that you can get to the next level and break these plateaus. So the example that we're going to look at is my guy Anthony and he's a police officer from New York City and his incline bench, not even his flat, I'm talking about his incline bench here, which is more challenging, but lift than the flat, went from 185 for three reps to 225 for two reps, right? So that's almost a 40 pound increase on his incline bench press. And this is after he was plateaued, stuck at a certain weight for months at a time and had a hard time getting to the next level. And that's when we started working together. So these are the type of increases that I want for you guys. So the first thing we're gonna look at is progression schemes. And a progression scheme is how you are advancing or improving your lifts over time. Now there are different progression schemes that you can use and some are more appropriate than others depending on your level as a lifter. So the first progression scheme that we're gonna talk about is called single progression. And this is where someone is increasing the amount of weight that they can move on a session to session basis. And they are doing this within the same rep range every single time. Now this progression scheme is gonna work great for beginners because they have a lot of room to improve. They're far away from their strength ceiling or the genetic potential. And they can simply just add weight to the bar every single time. Now obviously that progression scheme can't last forever. Now let's do some math. If someone wants to add five pounds to their bench press every single week, and they were to do that for an entire year, which has 52 weeks, 52 weeks multiplied by five pounds per week is 260 pounds. Now, I don't know too many guys who've added 260 pounds to their bench press. Matter of fact, there's a lot of guys who cannot even bench press 260 pounds. So obviously, that progression scheme has limitations. So now the issue is that a lot of lifters who used to use single progression to increase their bench press are now more advanced, they're stronger, they're moving more weight, but they still have that same mindset of I'm trying to increase weight every single week, and if I don't, then I've hit a plateau and I'm not making progress. And that's not necessarily the case. All we need to do now is look at other progression schemes that are more realistic or more appropriate for our new level as a lifter. So the next progression scheme that we're gonna look at is called double progression. Now the goal with double progression is to hit the top end of the rep range on all sets before you increase the weight. So here's an example. Let's say your training program says you have to bench press for four sets of eight to 12, right? Eight to 12 is your rep range. 12 being the high end of the rep range and eight being the low end of the rep range. If you could bench press 185 for four sets of eight, you're gonna stay with 185 until you can bench press 185 for four sets of 12, right? 12 being the top end of the rep range. Once you can accomplish that, you would then increase the weight to say 190 or 195, and then you would repeat the process. As you can see, double progression gives you a lot more time to adapt to a certain weight. It may take you two, three, maybe even four weeks before you can hit the top end of the rep range and then increase the weight. So the last progression scheme that I wanna cover here is called linear periodization. And linear progression is where you're increasing the weight, but then reducing the reps. So let's say you're bench pressing 185 for eight reps. The next session, you're gonna go in and you're gonna do 195 for six reps. And then the next session after that, you're gonna do 205 for four reps. As you can see, the weight is going up, but the reps are going down. So what you would do is repeat that process from a higher start point. So instead of starting at 185 for eight reps, you will start at 195 for eight reps. With this approach, you'll be able to train with different loads and different rep ranges, which is nice to mix it up, and you'll see increases every fourth session, right? First session, second session, third session, Fourth session, you repeat, but at a higher start point. So to quickly recap, you have single progression, where you're gonna increase the load every single time and stay within the same rep range. Second is double progression, where you're gonna stay with the same load until you can hit the top end of the rep range on all sets, and then increase. And then finally, you have linear periodization, where you're gonna be increasing the load, 
decreasing the reps, and then repeating the cycle from a higher start point each time. And I want you guys to comment below and let me know which progression scheme you're using now or which progression scheme sounds most interesting to you. Professional bodybuilder because that's not my, my thing. That's not your motive. That's like, not that's my not motive. Goal. I, I lift heavy. In my opinion, I lift heavy. <laughs> Number two is playing with different training frequencies. And training frequency is how many times per week you are training in muscle group or performing a certain exercise. So most people are benching once, maybe twice per week. And what I would recommend is playing with different frequencies to see what sort of results that gives you. What I would do is take the current amount of sets you're doing right now for your bench press and just divide it in more sessions per week. Let's say you're bench pressing twice per week and you're doing about eight sets of benching on each session which is a total of 16 sets. So what I would suggest is increasing your frequency on your bench press and maybe benching three or four times per week instead of just two. So for example, you would take that same 16 sets that you were doing in two sessions and you would divide it into three sessions. So maybe you're doing five or six sets of benching in each of those sessions and just see what sort of results that gives you. So point number three is to deload. And this is something a lot of people have an issue with. Even though it's a period where you're doing less, you're allowing your body to recover, you dissipate fatigue so you can sort of actualize your true fitness and see where your true strength levels are at. It's something people struggle with because they have this go, go, go mentality, push, push. You know, you're trying to make progress, you're trying to make gains, you're trying to break plateaus. In your mind, doing more is the answer. But this is not always the answer. Sometimes you have to stop, you have to do less, and you have to allow your body to recover so you can take things to the next level. So the way I would recommend deloading is to do three things. One is to reduce the weight that you're usually lifting by 10 to 15%. Number two is to do one less set than you typically do. And number three is to do the low end of the rep range on all your sets. Taking this approach for one week is gonna allow you to recover, it's gonna reduce fatigue, and you're gonna come back stronger. And this may be what you need to break through and get to the next level. Point number four is finding the sweet spot for how many sets you should be doing per week. Now this isn't a fixed number. This is a moving target depending on how you're progressing as a lifter. But one thing you wanna keep in mind is that not doing enough sets isn't gonna be enough to progress. So you may need to increase the amount of training volume you are doing and doing too much, maybe too much to recover from, doing too much, too much sada. You sort of wanna find that middle range where you can progress continuously and that may take some experimentation. Point cinco, which means number five in Spanish, a bigger muscle has more potential strength output meaning a larger muscle has more potential to generate strength on an exercise than a smaller one. So there's several things behind how well you can produce force. There's motor unit recruitment, there's rating of firing, like how fast the muscle fibers can fire when you are trying to move a certain load, the synchronization of those muscle fibers, how good you are or how familiar you are with a certain movement, all those things matter. But the thing that we want to focus on here is that a bigger muscle has more potential for strength. So what does that mean for people like me and you trying to break plateaus and bench press more weight? So one of the reasons someone heavily focused on breaking a bench press plateau may not be doing enough work to maximize muscle size is that they're always lifting heavy. They're always in that low rep range, three, four, five reps, trying to bench press more weight. Now the problem with that is that you're not gonna get a lot of training volume when you're always doing that. What you need to do is step back and use a lighter load, start bench pressing in the eight, 10, 15 rep range, and make sure you're getting enough protein in the calorie surplus, and you will start to see more mass. Now if you're lifting heavy, that is fine, as long as you're incorporating more hypertrophy, high volume work as well. And the last and final point, and if you stuck around this long, you are the truth, and you're gonna be smashing plateaus just now, is focusing on recovery outside of the gym. So three key factors that we wanna look at is sleep, nutrition, and stress management. This 2018 systematic review that included 17 studies found that consecutive nights of sleep restriction reduced force output of multi-joint movements. And a bench press is a multi-joint movement. Sleep restriction is when you're not getting enough good quality sleep. And I actually did an interview with sleep researcher, Dr. Amy Bender, where she mentioned most adults need between seven and nine hours of sleep per night. So if you're not able to get enough quality sleep at night, Something else you can look at is taking naps. And this is something athletes do to make up for lost sleep and it has actually been shown to have a positive impact on weightlifting performance. Next is nutrition and understanding our total calorie intake is gonna affect how we perform in the gym. Lifting performance is typically best when someone is consuming maintenance calories or is in a slight calorie surplus. So the last thing is stress management. 
and knowing that stress can have a negative effect on how we adapt to weight training. So we can either look at ways to eliminate or reduce the source of the stress and have strategies to manage stress when we encounter it. So that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Now, if you found that beneficial and you would like to see more videos like it, feel free to subscribe to the YouTube channel and turn on post notifications so you don't miss any of the future videos. Also, if you'd like to help me out and help the channel to grow, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below letting me know which of those points you found most beneficial and just let me know where you are with your bench press progress. So once again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.